Yes, good afternoon everyone. Good afternoon everyone. Can you audible can I can you audible me? Yes sir. Yes sir. Okay, so what is the thing we are discussing in the last class? Any discussions now? What do you think we are discussing in the last class? Yes? Yes, any discussion? Anyone? We are discussing about inter-process communication. In the inter-process communication, as a part of inter-process communication, so we have discussed so different uh, uh, things about inter-process communication. What are the models? What are the things will be there in the inter-process communications models? So shared memory, uh, shared memory system, as well as message passing. So we have discussed the shared memory. How the shared memory will be there? So we are going to have a, a, a memory which is like in, uh, created by the process which you want to communicate. So that memory will be uh, shared be, be between those two processes. That is called the shared memory. So we have discussed as a part of that we have discussed the uh, consumer uh, producer consumer problem. So how it can be solved by a producer consumer problem that can be solved by using a shared memory. And after that we have discussed message passing. So in the message passing as a part of in message passing. So we have discussed what are the different things we can uh, have direct indirect communication and uh, what is this uh, buffering what is the naming uh, conflict and synchronization so these are things we have discussed so how we have message passing done so message passing done by two uh, keywords that is a communication there will be a communication link will be there so create uh, that will be creating a communication link so using that communication link that process will be uh, talking between one and each other by using a uh, two things that is send request send and receive send message and receive message so send message like uh, we have send message and receive message so that we have a, a channels uh, what are the things we have discussed the channel may be a communication channel what is the communication link or channel may be a direct or indirect or else uh, what is the memory which is created so what is uh, buffering what are the types of buffering we have discussed and after that we have discussed a uh, synchronization what is the synchronization synchronous or asynchronous whether the communication will be synchronous or asynchronous things these things have we discussed in the last class so that ends your um, uh, third part of your first unit so that is the third module of your first unit third module of your first unit so next we are going to discuss about thread so multi threading programming this is the final part and the fourth part of your first unit fourth part of your first unit so so now we are going to discuss a detail about the thread so in the previously we have discussed some what is a thread and how it will be uh, doing so what is the thread actually so thread is the uh, basic unit of uh, execution what is the process uh, if at all if you take uh, a program so program uh, the, that is an instruction which is given by a uh, user whereas if at all uh, program under execution is called as a process but the, there are the process creates some many threads so one process can create the many threads if at all the process is executing under cpu it is utilizing itself under the cpu that is called as a thread so that is divided into multiple uh, things and it will be executed concurrently or executed parallel if at all a process want to execute parallel uh, like do uh, no, it going to divide into threads so now we are going to divide uh, discuss a detail about what is the thread and how it will be uh, dividing so how it will be done so what is the multi threading uh, programming how it will be there so these things we are going to discuss now in this class okay is it my screen visible to everyone is the screen visible yes sir okay okay so as a part of threads so we are going to discuss what is the multi core uh, programming and uh, no one is allowed to join the uh, class again next from this so i'm not going to allow them to join so d please don't uh, request the join okay okay so these are the things we are going to discuss so uh, what is the object of this uh, uh, 
multi threading programming a thread so to introduce the, uh, the notation of thread the fundamental unit of cpu and utilization that forms a basic of multi threaded computer systems to discuss the api of for the p thread and windows and java uh, thread library so these things we are going to discuss as a part of this uh, like uh, module and first first comes to thread so uh, what is a thread actually so thread is a basic unit of cpu utilization so whenever a process is created so up to now we have discussed what is process 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 everything a process so but if at all in the case the process executing so we say the program is executing under uh, cpu is called as a process so now if at all we are we have a one process is executing so we don't like uh, in situation where we have uh, we have we have given an example that in the last class the browser is open so browser may have a multiple process because if at all one one tab can consist of one process and other tab can consist of other process so these processes are running the same thing if at all one tab is open that is also doing the same work other tab is also opening that is also doing the same work if at all opening a multiple process make a burden of a cpu instead of that the same instead of doing that we can write the process to me write uh, the same thread which executes the same type of uh, logic under the cpu so that it it also have the same thing so instead of giving a separate resources for the each process we are going to uh, take out multiple threads into into that uh, from the process and we are making that already given a resources for the uh, processor we are going we are sharing that process to thread thereby your utilization becomes more so therefore instead of executing a multiple process of same type that makes a burden of system we are going to divide the process into multiple threads so there uh, that comes the logic of threading so what is actually a thread a thread is a basic unit of a cpu utilization so that is like it is going to what is a, if at all if we are saying that the cpu is executing a process that type particular process which you are going to the part of a process is called as a, a, a thread the some small executing part of a process is called as a thread okay so when when we take a thread so that thread consists of thread id a program counter a register set and a stack so these are the different uh, uh, things when whenever, whenever it is thread is created so these are the part of the thread so it comprises a thread id so thread uh, program counter a register set and a stack uh, if at all uh, threads are uh, one process is executing that may create a multiple pro multiple threads or a one thread based upon what are the requirement of the particular uh, things to be done so what is the task has to be executed so based upon that so if at all the thread is created by that particular process when it is created it is cre it creates a thread id so it automatically we have a thread id for a particular thread and we are going to have a program counter and a register set and a stack so here a program counter says like what is the next program next instruction to be executed and that is the that is the uh, reason for we are going to have a program counter and what is the register set so we are going to have uh, instead of cpu we are going to have a, C, a register so from that we have to allocate some registers to co complete the task by that thread so that some register set will be given to that particular uh, thread to execute that particular task and we are going to have a stack to store the variables so that is about the, whenever any thread is created it is going to have it is comprises of thread id Uh, a program counter, a register set, and a stack. So these things will have will be there with a whenever a thread is created. So remember these things, and it shares with other thread belong belonging to the same process. It is its code section, data section, and other operating system resources such as open files and signals. Whenever so we have an uh, like a thread, so that thread going to sh sh show. share for example one process is creating a multiple threads so that threads the multiple threads we going to share if at all when a process is created we we have discussed previously a process created a process will have its code section data section and operating system resources as well as we are going to give operating system resources for the process now that process is creating a multiple threads for that to complete one task therefore that code section and data section and other operating system resources what are the system resources which are allocated for that process we are going to share between those threads okay so for example uh, let me uh, give you a bit simple example here uh, so for example there is a p0 is created the process p0 is created for this process have given code 
code section i have allocated a code section what is the code what is the particular code of that particular thing and we have given a data to execute the data section data section and we have given uh, like uh, resources what are the resources to execute let, let me take here io is a resource for that to execute this process zero if at all this process zero is divided into multiple threads t1 t2 and t3 th this three threads will be taking like uh, this three threads threads will will be sharing this code section and data section as well as uh, your uh, what are the resources which is allocated so that going to be there that going to be happening inside that so therefore what happens so only one so one process having a multiple multiple uh, things which have given for this so uh, thereby execution becomes a faster we are not going to give a much much time to do, do that and we are not uh, making a resource to be divided into process so therefore your completion of task will become faster so this is happens in the uh, this happens in the thread technology thread uh, thread things okay so uh, a thread uh, a traditional heavyweight process as a single thread of a control if a process has a multiple threads of a control it can perform more than one task at a time the same thing as i said if it are the traditional so that is one uh, one in a large regular system if it is having a process only one process single pro process has a single thread of a control so it is having a one only one thread so for example p1 so p1 is having only one thread to execute at a time so what what happens so only every time it executes only one thread so next time next thread next time next thread we don't have a multiple thread if at all the process has a multiple threads of a control it can perform more task than so more than one task at a time so if at all so p1 is divided into t1 and t2 and t3 so now so this this uh, p1 is divided t1 some task for example a p1 has to perform three task at a time so that is three task are divided into uh, thread 1 uh, thread 2 and thread 3 Three, these three will be co concurrently executing under the cpu therefore the task will be complete is in the uh, parallel so therefore your task will complete in the first step so you are going to complete your what is the what is the task which is given to the particular process will be completing the first step so therefore uh, so division of your uh, process into multiple threads makes your uh, work faster work faster so we are going to see how like how the single uh, single thread uh, will be there how the three single thread technology will be there and how multi multiple threads if at all single thread if at all we are going to divide a process into single thread how it will be there so here if at all if i am saying a single thread nothing so we don't have thread we don't have process p p itself is doing that all the works so one thread all the works on until unless so now we have p1 is divided into multiple things multiple subtasks subtasks so that is doing its own work so that thereby your task becomes faster okay see here so already we have discussed so <coughs> excuse me so this is the a common section was tapa section is a common section for every process whenever a process is created let, let me take this is the process a p1 this is a process p2 so p2 so now this process is divided only one thread is divided into one thread this process have its own code is data and files which is given so every process which have as i said so what are the process which is created so it's going to have a code section data section and other operating system resources what are the resources which has been there so here resources may be here files so now we has given files so now this is a process p1 it is having its own code data and files this is process p2 is also having its own code what is the code section and data section and files it is having but this thread uh, this process is divided into only one thread this is having only one thread so it is going to have it is going to share a, is only one one thread is going to have a code data file and it's having so as i said we have discussed every every uh, thread will have its own program counter register and stack so it is having its registers what are the registers which are allocated for this thread and what is the register uh, uh, stack it is allocated to stack but here in this second case what are the second case here we have a um, register stack to its own thread so now thread is divided uh, this process is divided into three threads <coughs> three threads this thread is having its own registers and stack this thread is having its own registers and stack this thread is having its own registers and stack <coughs> therefore thereby uh, the l what is the <coughs> common section what is the common section which is there this is shareable between these three threads thereby we don't have to share much 
much time here or else much uh, resources to share between these two these three process so these three process uh, these three threads are uh, commonly sharing the same same resources which is allocated for the process p2 okay that is an advantage of your dividing your process into multiple threads so this is single thread single thread process and multi thread process if it all process is divided into one pro one thread that means we have only one process to execute at a time here now we are going to divide that process p p1 or p2 we are going to divide into three sub tasks or multiple tasks so thereby if at all the p p2 has to do multiple uh, tasks at a time so that tasks are divided as threads so that threads are executed concurrently thereby your execution becomes a faster your task uh, task runs in the faster way so that is an advantage of um, making your um, uh, process into multiple threads okay did you got it did you get it <coughs> yes is that clear everyone no one in the class yes okay so here uh, uh, before uh, uh, going to this for example i'll show simple uh, okay one minute uh, i'll show one one the software which which is going to show you what are the threads and what are the things which are present in your system so so i have got a one software showing what are the threads one minute i'll be showing you okay uh, there is a software called process view uh, process threads view for example i am running my process what are the process which are running here so see here everyone uh, can you see this so this is a window so where we have what are the process we have so in the previously also we have discussed what are the things we have discussed so process will have its own id process id what is here this is the process id so in my system when i have open so this is the software which is going to show what are the processes which are running and if at all if i open a process what are the threads which is going to divide so these are the process all the process which are running in my system see here so this is the one process and this is the other process this is process other process so here my google chrome see here my google chrome uh, is divided this is application the google chrome application is divided into how many process here 1 2 3 4 so 5 6 6 processes are running for the same google chrome and if i open this process uh, 1936 see here so how many threads are running at a time so these are the threads so see here the thread id this is the thread is as i said we are going to discuss so when every every uh, in this previous previous lecture uh, slide we have seen so every thread has its own id so thread id and program counter and register see here what is thread id so here what is the thread id 2628 for this thread id so now see here one google chrome process is divided into how many th how many threads 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 18 threads are divided so each thread is having its own work work uh, its own like uh, id its own id and see here here context switch do you know what is context switches so we have discussed about context switch switching between the one thre uh, one process to other process here we, we may like how many switches are there the context switch so it happened 119 times sir. so this context switch happened here 119 times for this uh, thread it has happened 1 uh, 12000 times the context has happened so this is everything is shown here so here uh, as we seen so stack so stack is created for each thread so this is a stack base where from where it is been starting what is the stack size so everything we have we have shown so here so what is the stack data everything we are going to see so we are going to see what are the registers which are there for particular stack so these are the registers which are allocated for this stack when i click on this so i'm going to get what are the registers so what is this register and this register so what are the registers which are allocated for that okay this is about so for example each so what are the threads so so these many process are created and in that process each process is creating its own threads so that means multiple threads are created for each process so what is the reason to create a multiple threads for example uh, let's uh, i can say so when i open a browser so the same thing when i open a browser so i want to like uh, open uh, that is that means i want to view the system so that means browser is opening the system that is viewing maybe it is a ui maybe it is a ui ui thing that is that divided into one thread 
and another task maybe is to download a file for example you click a, click down the some link to download any any uh, for example any download file so you click down the file so file is downloading so that is another task so viewing is another task and downloading is another task so parallelly you, you viewing that uh, viewing the things and already parallelly you are downloading the things so the work is done uh, doing it parallel so that makes done use by using a multi thread whereas your one task is done by one thread another task is done by other threads so one process is divided into multiple threads thereby your task becomes a faster so completes your things faster so this is an advantage of multiple threads a multi threading system multi threading programming we can say multi thread programming that is an advantage of multi thread programming Uh, next what are the things what is the reason where we are going to go for the multi threading so first one so the most modern applications are multi threaded all the applications which are uh, given all the multi uh, uh, modern app uh, applications are multi threaded so the thread run within the applications so, as i said as so one application we have multiple threads we have going to have so here an example see here multiple task with an application can be implemented by separate threads see here multiple if at all uh, Uh, multiple task has to be done by one application that is that is done by your multiple threads for example you are viewing a, a word you opened a word you are typing you are typing something and uh, you it is reading it what is you are typing that is one task as well as it is also checking grammar whether your typed is correct or not so there are multiple task running at a time so you are typing typing the and from the keyboard is converted into your keystroke is converted into words and that as well as as well as at that same time what is the word you have typed that is also checking whether the as per the syntax or as per the grammatical or not that is also another task so the multiple task running at a time this can be possible by using a multiple threaded programming multi threading uh, technology so that is a uh, advantage see here for example multiple task with an application can be implemented by separate threads so update display for example you are displaying uh, updating a display and fetch the data and the same way spell checking so see here so what is the display it is going to show one is what that is a one thread and what is the fetching when you are typing it it is going to show what is the data it is going to show that is one other another task and spell checking it is also checking the spell answer in network request so if at all if you are giving a question this is uh, requesting a answer what is the answer from the network so it is also another another work it is doing in the background so therefore multiple works are multiple tasks are running by the making your process into multiple threads your process into multiple threads this is the called as multi process multi threading technology so your first your program is divided into process your process is divided into multiple threads process divided into multiple threads uh, here process creation is heavy weight while thread is is highlight weight as i said so for example uh, if you want to uh, Uh, work parallelly if you want to work uh, sir you can ask a question sir instead of creating a multiple uh, threads you can create a multiple process same doing the same thing what is the if at all if you are creating a multiple process is doing the same work no 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 you no no use and it is it makes more work or it makes heavy weight because uh, when you are creating a new process it has to allocate its we have to allocate a separate resources for it separate data section a separate code section for it and each and everything we have to allocate and if at all if you are creating a thread the thread we are going to uh, the thread will going to share the same thread going to share the same uh, code section which is created for that what is the resource which is allocated for the same process here a process may be a separate uh, uh, may be a separate uh, that task is divided again sub task so like that it is going to do so for example if, if you have a, a server system you have a server and you clients are requesting so for a server may uh, every time may uh, like what is this? it is going to give answers or else it is going to uh, that is respond many 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 requests that means there may be thousands or lakhs of responses at one time so if at all if you are creating only one th uh, one process at a time so the requesting is like what is the request which is going to allocate uh, it may be a one task requesting is one task so the same task has to be performed we are give, we are making it as a one process at a time so it makes huge time to respond each and every process at a time so that means here the response is one task for example the uh, we are requesting the server is uh, running in the back sorry server is going some clients are requesting my uh, thousands of requests 
if at all server has to respond for the request so many re- many uh, clients are requesting at a time uh, server has to respond for the that thousand requests requests so if at all you have only created one process or one thread at a time that means for re- responding for responding remember for responding for what is the request which is given to respond only how many times thousand requests are coming it has to wait for thousand process to create that means after one process executing next process has to be created. how much time it will take so much time therefore the same task what is the task responding is the task so for the same task you can create a multiple threads thereby so multiple threads are running parallelly therefore parallel re- requests can be uh, like requests can be uh, served in the parallel way so serve in the concurrent way therefore your re- your work will be done in the faster way that is an ad- ideology behind your thread technology multiple thread okay uh, can simplify your code increase efficiency what is the advantage of multiple threading and kernels are generally multi threaded so what is the, what is the user kernels what is the kernel what do you program what do you uh, written so that are multi threading so therefore so your your program what is the applications you written so that can become some multi multiple threads okay so here the same example i have told so when a client is requesting for the server so we are going to create a thread saying to re- re- listen to the client or respond to the client or resume re- listen to client so if at all if you are creating a separate for each process for separately how many clients are requesting how many type types of requests are it is coming it has to allocate each process each uh, process each resource for every time it be, but it burdens your server therefore instead of making your uh, giving separate process for each time so you make a process that same task process into multiple threads and where it is going to uh, serve that request for the uh, server uh, rec- client request thereby it will be uh, performing a um, uh, parallel so thereby your serving your request will become faster so that is the advantage of your multi threaded server architecture so that is the thing so this is same example i have told you okay so what is the benefit benefits what are the benefits of uh, uh, using your um, uh, multi threaded system so first one is the responsiveness what is the responsiveness so here uh, a multi multi threaded is an interactive application so that means uh, for example if at all any uh, any thread or anything any task is uh, like blocked or uh, process blocked by one thing one part is blocked blo- uh, one part of a process is blocked so that uh, the remaining threads or remaining part of a process will be continued to execute or thereby your your only one, only some part of your system, process uh, like uh, application may be uh, blocked a remaining will be running out so thereby your responsiveness will be more so that is an uh, uh, about a response for example so where you have ui so ui is one uh, one cross process you open ui so if at all you have clicked on some icon for some, some any, any icon you have clicked it any icon you clicked it so if it takes some much time to uh, clicking is one task and other task is to response respond at making a response so clicking taking a multiple times it is not if it is only one thread or one thread if you have one thread so if at all if your clicking is taking a much time you are opening your application takes much time for example you have divided into multi threads clicking is like part of that you have clicked on but the remaining application opened it understood for example you any application is opened remember any application is opened you uh, thought to open for some file you clicked on open file click open uh, that is uh, for example you open file and that uh, file menu and the go, you went to my file menu and the file menu you clicked on open that open when you clicked on open is one thread for example is only one thread is executing only one time if it is not executing your system goes to unresponsive because of only one thread that thread is executing only one task thread is executing what is the, what is the task open task is executing one time the remaining your ui goes into unresponsive Thing. so therefore uh, if, if at all you have divided so opening ui is one one thread and clicking that task opening a file is another task and another thread so if that thread is also that thread is not responding also your until unless your ui is opened your thread what is the thread to open your ui is running in still background in the background therefore your ui will be still so it will not your application will not be unresponsive so thereby 
तो मल्टी थ्रेड सर मल्टीपल टास्क और मल्टी थ्रेड्स प्रोग्रामिंग मेक्स युअर मोर रेस्पॉन्सिव रेस्पॉन्सिवनेस फॉर युअर अप्लिकेशन एंड रिसोर्स शेयरिंग वॉट इज द रिसोर्स शेयरिंग सो एज अ सेट सेम थिंग इन द प्रीवियस प्रीवियस एग्जाम्पल फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू हैव मल्टीपल ही हैव रिसोर्स वॉट इज द रिसोर्स वी हैव गिवन कोड डेटा फाइल फॉर वॉट इज द फाइल इज इज अ रिसोर्स हियर एंड वॉट इज द फाइल टू रीड द फाइल इज अ रिसोर्स इफ यू टल यू हैव ओनली वन थ्रेड वन थ्रेड सो दिस फाइल हेज टू बी टेकन दिस फाइल हेज टू बी रीड बाई द सेम थ्रेड सेम थ्रेड वॉट इज दन थ्री वन थ्रेड सिंगल थ्रेड विच इज क्रिएटेड and if at all if you are creating another process this file has to be uh, same file has to read to another process p2 we have after completing this only we have to und- hand over to next process thereby the sharing will not become much so therefore therefore so now if at all so p1 so this is the p1 process p1 which has to complete one task from x another task which is completed is this is x1 this is x2 and we have created another process p2 for uh, making the same same task type of x2 this is task x1 to create for example we have given a uh, same type of uh, code data and file and for this p2 also it is have it is also need same code data and file after completion of p1 only we can give to p2 thereby if at all we have divided p1 into multi threads which is to make a same task x x x1 x2 x3 and the same code data and files will be shared between this x1 x2 x3 that is between this uh, thread 1 thread 2 thread 3 so thereby your resource utilization resource sharing becomes more that is an advantage of uh, we are not going to create a multiple uh, that is uh, another uh, separate resource for that here the same resource which is allocated for a process that process resource only will be taken care will be uh, will be used by your threads which are created under that process so thereby your maximum utilization will be there your process uh, that is resource sharing will be there so that is an uh, that is one of the advantage of resource sharing resource sharing and next one economy so as i said this one same thing if at all your your resource sharing is done so your uh, economy becomes more for example uh allocating like allocating a memory and resources process uh, process creation is costly for example creating a process costly for example same process creating a multiple threads and the same resources allocating for the multiple threads in between those those process and we are not going to create separate uh, separate resources for them therefore less resources with less resources multiple tasks are completing therefore economy becomes like you are uh, we are not going to have multiple much um, overhead on the system so that becomes uh less economy and we have we don't have uh, multiple context switches so that means lower overhead than context switches so that is an also one of the advantage one of the benefit of the your multi threading uh, programming next scalability what is the scalability so scalability here uh, talks about your uh, uh, your multi core system or multi process architecture for example um, you have uh, Uh, system uh, you have you have written all this uh, what is this uh, code called uh, code for the multi programming or multi threading multi threading but your s- system does not support for it what it does your hardware is not supporting for this threading what are you going to do so that we cannot <coughs> do that so now your you have you have a logic of writing a multiple threads and you have multi process or multi cores are executing under multiple threads for example you have uh, you have uh, process p1 now you have like for example uh, your system is multiple uh, multiple uh, core system mm. your cpu this is a cpu divided into four cores this is one core and this is one core and this is another core and you didn't write a thre- uh, di- division so you wrote a proce- process p1 so this is process this process p1 every time is executing under this cpu another process p2 is executing itself. but whenever you have have to execute a process p1 has to execute four task task 1 task 2 and task 3 and task 4 four task has to be executed one at a time only one task on the p1 of the p1 will be executed under the cpu no use if at all these all the tasks four task are executing under cpu parallelly if at all they are executing t1 is executing under 
was see four one t two is executing under four two t three executing under four 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 three and t four is executing under four four. Thereby your process p one is worked fastly, completed faster, and thereby your uh, completion of task will become faster. That says a scalability. So you're increasing your what is this uh, greater type? Uh, what is the process uh, things you are given a multi processor architecture which you given? So you are making is a multiple uh, where you are going to have multi core. Uh, Systems to be executed under multi-process systems and multi-threaded things in the way. So here, for example, example. So single core, we are going to execute T1, T2, T3, T4, T4. Uh, T4. Four tasks are there. First, T1, T2, T3 are executing. Again, T1, T2, T3, T4 are executing. Again, T1, T2, T3 are executing. The same thing. If at all you have a multi-cores, for example, core one, core one, core two, and core three. So now T1 will execute here, T2 will execute here, T3 execute here. T1, T2, T3. So thereby you are working parallelly, completing a parallelly. So thereby you work faster. So this is uh, about your advantage. One of the advantage of your. So uh, these are the advantages of your. Uh, what is a multi-threaded programming? Multi-threaded programming. Is it clear, everyone? So now uh, we have seen like simple example like what is this multi-core prog multi-thread programming. If at all, how you are going to write, how you are going to uh, things deal with a multi-core, multi-core programming. So as a part of multi-threading, so we have to make sure that the programming which you are written or what is the application you are written that has to be executed under. As I said, so we have uh, all the system nowadays all the systems are coming with a multi-core. In the previous architectures we have discussed. One CPU is divided into multiple uh, cores. So now uh, core one, core two, core three, or let's say the four cores are there. Then you have written a program P1, program P1 to execute. But how it has been executing parallelly, or how it has been executing co under the these cores? How we are, how we may we have to make that? So they have to make them by using a parallelism and concurrency, making sure that. The parallel programming, the programming which is the thread, the so processor which are running, they make them parallelism and concurrency. There is difference between parallelism and concurrency. What is a parallelism? If at all, a system can perform a more than one task simultaneously is called as parallelism. But if at all, one task is making a progress, more than one task making its progress is called as concurrency. For example, as I said, uh, uh, there is a process P1. Mm, process P P one let's say process P it is a P one or P so he is having a T one T two T three and T four 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 uh, four threads are divided into four threads here we have four cores as I said the C P is having a four cores if at all this process P one every time a T one is executed and T one is executing. And T2 is executing, T3 executing, T4 executing. This is called as parallel. Parallel. And if at all same type of process executing T1, T2, T3, T4, and same thing, that is, uh, they are executing the task which is divided. More than one task of T1, T2, T3 is dividing. They are performing simultaneously. They are executing simultaneously. That is called as parallel. What is the concurrency? If at all T1 is going its uh, going to work its uh, itself. For example, T1. And T1 and T1 and T2. At uh, the same way, T1 executing is same under the same process is completed its task. At the same way, and same in the same process is completed. T2 is completed its only same process. And this is this thing is called as parallel is parallel, and this is called as concurrency. So every time we are going to have a multiple task are performing or more than one task is simultaneously working its own working. Already it's working. That is called as uh, parallel. If at all it is more than one task making its progress. For example, uh, I want to uh, like uh, do one uh, like four tasks are doing. So have I have want to I want to open a book. I want to read that. I want to like write on the pen, and I want to uh, like understand myself. These three tasks are running at a time. Is called as parallel. But they are getting. progress for example i am opening as well as as well as 
uh, reading as well as and writing as well as understanding these three four tasks are running at a time they are called as concurrency they are making so i am opening the book i am reading as well as two the tasks are running at the same way and understanding myself and writing on the book four tasks are performing at the same way, uh, same time and they are progressed they are in the progress that is called as concurrency but they four are working are called as parallel okay this is a difference between concurrence concurrent and parallel and what is the multi core or multi process system uh, like for example uh, we have to uh, when as a software or a software programmer or a programmer you going to write a program uh, we have a, a environment to environment to execute a multiple process or multiple threads at a time but the, we have multiple cores but we have to make sure that whether we are implementing that programming into in the in the application when you are writing an application or not that can be done by these activities how it can be done by using divide act, dividing the activities making a balance data splitting and data dependency and testing and debugging we have to make sure when you are uh, writing that so as i said so multi core or multi systems uh, putting a pressure on the programmers challenges included what are the pro- they are putting pressures what what they are putting so you have to divide the activity what are the program which you have written that should divide itself to divide their activities and to make the balance what is the balance here what is what is the use of balance what are the for example you have given a task uh, for a t1 t2 t3 so these three tasks having giving a same type of priority to them to execute for example t1 is getting more more resources or t2 is not getting same more uh, some only getting some resources they are not balanced things so each process or each thread which is running they has to get their balanced thing there either it is resources either it data data reading or execution or everything that makes you a balanced and the data data splitting so if at all we have uh, multiple uh, programs are running at a time or multiple threads are running we have to give a data uh, we have to divide the data uh, in between them the pro- uh, threads which are executing the data dependency uh, data dependency so what is say like for example one task uh, two or more tasks are divide, given so they have they have uh, like uh, divided into uh, process divided into two or more tasks they have to read the data which is given for them so which is like that uh, that task for example uh, t1 uh, thread t1 is taking that uh, reading it data and t2 is reading the data and they have to make them so dependence one one ta- uh, this thread uh, reading of this thread depends on next thread so that makes a data dependency what is if at all this completed or not so everything is makes under data dependency and testing and debugging so when a program is running in the parallel so for example multi program multi core systems or many systems are running so we have to make sure that all this, all the things are uh, concurrently running or debugging in like wherever we are getting any difficulties or anything is going or not we have to test and debug them, debug them. so that is a implies your testing and debugging so these are the works and these are the challenges of a programmer which is who is writing multi core programming under the multi core systems so what is the first thing so divide and act, dividing the activities what are the activities which given a program that should be divided between them balance so whether the given resources are balanced or not data splitting the splitting of your data is correct or not the data dependency a data between so we have to make sure that all the data is coming between the uh, all the threads or all the programs which are divided so testing and debugging how whether it, we, we make sure that whether it is working perfectly under the uh, multi core systems or multi thread programming so that is comes under your testing and debugging and we have here uh, things two things uh, parallelism and concurrency what is parallelism so if it, it, it work is divided divided that task that work or that task divide, division of that work or we have a multiple task that multiple task are performing or um, running simultaneously that is called as parallelism but if at all multiple task getting a progressed working a progressed that is called as concurrency okay yes we have seen what is a parallelism but what is the uh, 
parallelism so we have data parallelism and task parallelism so what do you mean by data parallelism so distribute a subset of same data across a multiple co- multiple cores same operation on each so that this data parallelism we are going to divide the given data for example the data is given so we have array of array so for example uh, a of uh, a of 10 numbers uh, n numbers are there we are given array uh, let's take 0 to and so on n yeah so we have a multiple cores so as i said uh, two cores are there let's take two cores are there so this the data is divided for example if it is only one 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 okay it is we going to execute a of 0 to a of n we are going to see. So, but the same data from a of 0 to a of n by 2 up to a of n by 2 is given to core 1 and remaining a of n by 2 plus 1 to a of n is given to core 2 so we are dividing this data between the cores multiple cores across their cores so this is same thing we are saying distribute the subsets what is subset this is a of 0 to a of n by 2 is one set and a of n by 2 plus 1 to a of n is another set mm. same data across the multiple cores same operation on each this is called as data parallelism and task task parallelism what is the task parallelism distributing a thread across uh, distributing threads across the cores each thread performing unique operation each thread performing a unique operation is called as task parallelism for example we have to make some uh, what do you say uh, summing up uh, that is any al- uh, arithmetic operation on this same what is the uh, array of numbers we are making addition for one by one some part is given task is given for this uh, this one and remaining task is given to another, another code here we are going to divide we are dividing the threads so this is uh, task one is divided this t1 this is t2 so this is called as task parallelism what is the task has to perform on this array we are divided in between the uh, between these two cores this is called as task parallelism we are dividing the data between these two now now uh, here summing from a of 0 to a of n by 2 is one task and a of n by 2 plus 1 to a of n minus 1 and another task you have added this to and added this to this task is given to this core this task is given to this core so now we are making a task parallelism here another another uh, what as a number of threads grows as a number of thread grows so does architectural support for the threading so now what is the as i said so if at all we are going on increasing the threads so that has to be supported by your what is the thing hardware which is given created that has to be supported also so now you make sure that what are the hardware you are given so hardware you are uh, creating a hardware so your your uh, perform uh, that is um, what is a designing they has to support what are the uh, have set so now we have two uh, things two two challenges challenges here what is the challenge as i said we have going to divide your program uh, process into multiple threads okay you have written a program to divide into multiple threads but has your hardware supports that so that is also to, should, should be taken care so cpu have a cores as well as hardware threads consider so we have one examples oracle uh, spark t4 is a one of the uh, uh, system that is a hardware system which is having eight cores and eight hardware threads per core so that means at a time eight hardware cores can be supported can be supported at a time so that is an like so example how uh, hardware is going to support so this is about a multi core programming multi core program so as i said so what is the concurrence uh, in, uh, now we have, we, have, we have given so this is a parallelism and concurrency so example here so for example single core concurrent execution for example on single core how it will be done so this process p1 is divided into p is divided into t1 t2 t3 and t4 this t4 so four four uh, four process is divided into four threads now it has been completed one up to here one task is completed again it started from t1 to t2 again t1 to t2 like that on the single core 
T1, T2, T3, T4. Next, T1, T2, T3, T4. T1, T2, T3, T4. This is how a concurrent execution and single code. So here parallelism. So making a making that into parallel. So now they are getting a progressed. See here, task one they have divided into task one, task two, task three, task four. One task with this four are executing. They they are making some uh, progress. That is called as concurrency. But here parallel. What is making a parallel? So for example, core one we have two cores. Now T one T so T one is executing T two T three T four T one T two T three T four T one T two T three T four. So now they are executing. They come uh, T1 is uh, T1 T2 executing parallelly. If it all four cores are there. Now T3 and T4, and now it will become T1, T2, T3, and T4. So this makes a parallel. So all the uh, all the works, all the tasks are running parallelly. This is parallelism. This is concurrent concurrency. Okay. So uh, this is uh, Amdahl's law is one of the law which tells you. Uh, what is the what is like how many number of uh, so identifying how much uh, parallelism how much how much how much serialism are there in the number of process which are created so what is this identifies a performance gain from adding additional cores to an application that has both serial and parallel components if there if there are any any like hardware is having both serial and component uh, parallel components how much gain it going to get how much gain it is going to get Whether based upon how many parallel components or how many serial components are there, how many serial portion, how many parallel portions are, portion is there inside of your uh, system, or it may be there anything. So that is to calculate uh, things. We are going to use Amdahl's law. So how much speed up, how much speed up you are going to gain by your system that can be uh, formulated by using this uh, formula. Speed up is less than or equal to one by s plus one minus s by n. So one minus is by n. This is the formula to calculate to tell how much speed up is gained by your system, whether you're making serial thing to parallel components, serial things to parallel components. For example, your application is 75 percent of parallel and your 25 percent is serial. Then now you have how many cores? One to two cores. You have one core, but you're moving one one core to two cores. How much speed up can can be gained? 1.6 times is the speed up. it has been gained by your system can be gained up to 1.6 times the same way same way if you have same thing if you have uh, uh, can i say uh, what do you say uh, uh, 40% 40% of your application the 40% of your application is par, uh, application is uh, performing serial uh, for example uh, serial Serial and remaining, uh, what is it? Remaining, uh, what is it? Uh, what is 60 percent is uh, parallel. Parallel. How much it can be done? So that is like it may be uh, 2.5 times. What is the 2.5 times of previous? Thing? So that is can can be calculated. What is the like speed of in terms of uh, parallelism and serialism? So we are going to calculate how much your system can be gain your speed up. So that is the formula to. Check what is the formula to check that. So uh, Am Amdahl's law is the formula. Amdahl's law is the law which is going to tell uh, our, uh, what is the performance gain of a particular system or a particular thing. If at all we are going to make some part of into a serial and some part into parallel, how much part can be gained? So that is can be uh, calculated by using Amdahl's law. So simple law. It's not that much useful, but. So as n approaches infinity, if at all is n approaches to infinity, and speed up approaches to one by uh, one by s, so it is a reciprocal of your speed up, reciprocal of your speed. Up. So serial portion of application has this uh, this portion it effort on effort on the performance gained by the adding additional cores. So if at all is making like serial portion is like uh, this for this. Uh, Prop appropriate, is appropriate. Then you are going to have multi additional cores to be there. So that is the things which is going uh, tell by your Amdahl stuff. So next, so here uh, we are going to see. So we have multiple threads here, multi threading models. We are going to discuss. But what are the uh, type uh, we have said? So multi multi threads are there. Multi threads are going to execute. But we have multiple types of threads also. So here support. For the threads may be provided either by user level. So we have we have seen user level or user 
modes two modes user mode and kernel modes here if at all you have uh, uh, threads are executing they are called as user threads a user mode a user executing and if at all executed by kernel they are called as kernel threads so use threads are supported user threads are supported above the kernel and they are managed without the kernel support so what are the threads which are executing by user they are not supported by your kernel they are not managed by your kernel those those uh, threads are called as user threads they are not going to involve inside of your system and user threads are managed management done by user level threads library so what is this thread library so thread library is we have discussed what is the posix thread library this is the posix thread uh, thread library is a thread library which is going to give you in the windows like uh, types of what is the uh, task it is going to give so uh, posix is the one of the uh, header file which is going to give you uh, types of threads what is the system call which you are going to have we have discussed in the in terms of system call system calls we discuss say some so windows threads and java threads so these are the uh, user level threads these are the user level threads and uh, kernel level threads are kernel level threads are supported and uh, directed by your operating system so operating systems are, are done so they are then supported by your operating system so virtually all the general purpose operating system support the kernel threads so what are the system operating system that uh, supports your kernel uh, kernel threads are windows uh, solaris and linux and true 64 unix and mac os x these are the so what is this system uh, operating system which supports your kernel system these are the types of uh, threads what are the types of threads user threads and kernel threads so we are going to discuss in the next class what are the multi threading models which are there we have uh, many to one one to many and we have how they are going to support each other kernel thread to user thread user thread to kernel thread so this thing we are going to discuss in the next class okay the any doubts up to here everyone is that clear okay give your attendance One twenty, one twenty-one. Respond. One twenty-one. One twenty-two. Sir, I S A group discussion. Huh? Oh. Event for group discussion of I S A. One twenty-three. One twenty-three. 123 present sir 124 present sir 125 present sir 26 present sir 27 present sir 28 29 present sir 30 present sir 31 present sir 32 present sir 33 34 chat box sir 33 34 present sir 36 present sir 37 present 38 present sir 39 present sir 40 41 present sir 42 present sir 43 Fifty-seven. Present sir. Fifty-eight. Fifty-nine. Present sir. Sixty. Present sir. Sixty-one. Present sir. Sixty-two. Present sir. Sixty-three. Present sir. Sixty-four. 
మనకు అటెండెన్స్ వస్తలేమ్మా ఓకే సార్ థ్యాంక్ యూ సార్